Hi, I'm Mr. Franklin, and real briefly, I wanted to show you some ways to do a planner by hand if you don't have access to a calendar or a calendar planner. I advise that you try to use a calendar or calendar-based planner in general. For most people, it actually is very helpful um, because you don't have to do it by hand. I mean, you don't have to make it all, okay? Um, I say all that, but I actually tend to do it by hand. Um, most of the time, but when I have been um, doing some executive stuff in the military, I couldn't do it by hand. Um, not all of it, for sure, because I had to keep very tight schedules on a lot of issues. And so I would actually have um, an actual planner to work through stuff. So the more complicated life gets, it's worth getting an actual planner. But if you don't have that resource, as long as you have a piece of paper, even your composition book, you can make a, make a planner for yourself and make one that works for you. So here's two ways to do it. And I actually do both depending on what I'm actually doing. If it's more of just a list of things that I'm trying to get done by a certain day, I tend to do the vertical plan where it's almost like a list, like a to-do list, but it's listed by day. And I tend to actually get a lot of things done that way because I just go down the list and work down the list. However, when things get complicated and I need to actually do things by date, maybe it's multiple weeks, then I, I tend to do the horizontal plan. So let's take a look at what these might look like a little closer. This is actually this week of school. So next week might look a little different, but this is the vertical plan. I usually put a title on it because I'm doing this in my composition book so that if I turn to that page, I'm like, what is this? Oh, it's not notes, it's my plan. Um, if you're gonna do this regularly, I recommend that you um, like get a separate composition book and do it in there and not in your notes um, or put it in the very front and then save several pages, You know, count up how many weeks you need until the end of the year and make that your planner section and then use the rest for your notes. But you should put a title and then you should do the, the days of the week. And I actually start with the day and then I start putting what are the things I'm gonna do on that Monday. If you want to, you can add the date here. And that might be helpful, especially if you're able to do multiple days and even more so when we get into quarter projects where I'm going to give you a due date that's three weeks out. And so you might need some dates to plan with. But week to week, eh, maybe not a big deal because you're working Monday through Friday, maybe a couple of days on the weekend, that kind of a thing. Okay, so I go by day and then I list what's going on. This Monday, there was no work assigned on Monday because of no school. However, next week, you will probably have work. On Tuesday, you can do all of your classes. I'm not going to grade for your other classes. I'm just going to grade for the physics class. I recommend that if you're seriously going to do some planning that you should practice scheduling all of your stuff and put it in there. What I'm looking though for physics is that you be as specific as possible. So if you can put basically what the assignment number is along with maybe a short one word descriptor, you can get more detailed than that that's what I would do, okay? So um, I would keep it short and simple, partly because numbers is generally how we track things and talk about assignments. Um, but notice that I'm including the how-to, which is not an actual assignment, but I know that I have to watch that in order to understand and prepare for the next assignment. And I just went down my agenda in Canvas and kind of followed along with what the module said in Canvas as well. Okay. So you could continue to work through your whole day. If you got soccer practice as well, you could go ahead and put that on there. The busier you are, it's actually better to include as much information as you can. But notice that takes time, okay? So and some people will complain because they're like, I could be doing the thing instead of planning the thing. However, there are gonna be times where if you don't plan, you will miss something important and now you, maybe you're behind and you're in a world of hurt because you didn't plan. So to practice this, and that's what we're doing because you're freshmen, we're gonna practice this by making you at least as a minimum record your plan for physics. So 
make sure you're doing that. Okay, so I get to the end of what I'm doing on Tuesday and then I start the Wednesday list and I start listing this. So this time I only did the physics. There was this assignment here that I wasn't sure about. So I actually started and flagged it. I need to ask Mr. Franklin about that. That's one reason why I do like the paper version of doing this because I can write notes on there and I don't have to worry about where I'm writing on my calendar if I'm doing it on a calendar. So then I got Thursdays and then I got Friday stuff. Okay. And then you can do it however you want. I actually do double lines um, and then we'll put whatever the next week is and then do the next week and keep going. What I like about this doing it as a list style, I can also cross things out as I turn them in or I can highlight them. So let's say I pick a highlighter and I'm like, you know what? This exercise log is really important. I got to get that done. So, so I will actually, this is not a highlighter that I've got here. It's a pen, but you could highlight it with the highlighter and flag it for yourself. Hey, that's a test or a quiz. So you can get all kinds of fancy with this um, like you would any planner. All right, the other version is you basically create your own calendar. I can't afford to buy a planner or get a calendar um, or because of COVID, I'm just not able to leave leave the house or do, do a bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna do a, my own calendar. So to make your own calendar, a standard composition book, it's 24 spaces. So 24 spaces from this line all the way to this line is 24 spaces. So 24 divided by five is about five. So what I did is counted one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then I drew my lines vertically going down. And now I have my calendar. So part of this depends on how big you write. Um, so we had no school but maybe I'm gonna do my cougar den on that day. Uh, maybe I forgot something from the previous week, so I schedule it. Um, then I'm gonna do physics, and then I got my Spanish homework, I got my math homework, maybe I got soccer practice. You can do your whole day if you want to. I'm just gonna grade your physics though, okay? So all the assignments are the same. You can still flag it. Notice there's a little bit more tightness as far as room on how to write things. So you can actually put the number designation and then maybe write a descriptor underneath. Um, the main thing is when you do this, make it work for you. I generally tend to use this when I'm planning major things and I will actually usually do two weeks in a calendar planner. Cause then I'll go, I'll put the date. So this was the, what date was it? But now I'm actually making it a calendar. So then I go 123, actually got the weekend. So a lot of times in this blank space, this is where I put my weekend stuff. So 123 and 24. And then over here, I've got 125. And if you make a mistake, just draw a single line through it, 125 and keep going. If you wanna use whiteout, have at it. I don't ever use whiteout because I want to actually see what the mistake was because sometimes the mistake wasn't a mistake and then I need to read it. Okay, and then 128. So you could also do it like an actual calendar and make a calendar for yourself, but I do want to restress. I am looking for specifics. This is the work I'm going to do, okay? You can also put your schedule. So like I did put the two, here, let me clear this out. For this, Thursday, I did put in that I was going to go to tutorial time with uh, my teacher. So I put that in my schedule here. Okay. So you can actually schedule your Zooms and that's okay. You can also put those in. I did not because I know what day I'm going to go. I might even flag it as Zoom day, Zoom day, and, you know, call it good. Unless you're a Wednesday, Friday, that's my Zoom day. That's my Zoom day. And this is my tutorial day, this is my tutorial day, because your Zoom day is the same as your tutorial day. Okay, so make it work for you. That's the bottom line. If, if that just becomes, you can't manage that and that's not working for you, then you should consider getting the school's planner. Um, 
you can ask me. If you can't get a hold of one, I can maybe get get one to you somehow. Um, but communicate with me and let me know what's going on. And but you you definitely need to plan. And so we're going to continue practicing that and figuring out what works best. Because for some people, this calendar planner is a horrible idea. For some people, the list view is excellent. And for some people, it's a horrible idea too. Okay. But you need to begin planning because life is going to be, be getting more complicated in what you have to do and figure out. Okay. As you grow up. So anyway, that's what I've got for planner. Thank you and have a good night.